In this video, we're going to talk about how to add a single contact to your list. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here at our notes, and then we'll look inside of Lofty and exactly how to do it. So what we're talking about is to add people to the list one by one. We've been talking about uh, bulk importing. Now we're going to talk about adding one by one. Uh, this is for people that you meet that are new. You like them. They like you. And you think there's a good chance they'll do business with you in the future uh, or refer business to you. And they should, then if that they qualify there, then that should be added to your PCSOI list inside of Lofty. Uh, and remember to add the PCSOI tag. All right. We're going to do an example in just a second. Let's look at the next part. It says, hey, to manually add a contact, do the following. On the top menu, click People. And then from there, go ahead and click the left side of the Add uh, button. I'll show you what that means in a second. Pop-up box appears. You're going to fill in all the data. Remember, you're going to make it a private lead, so you control it and not the company. Uh, also note, towards the bottom, there is a double arrow. It took me forever to find this, so I'm going to show you what that is to get other options. Uh, and you're going to review that. In particular, you're going to look for the home anniversary date. If you have it, that's where you're going to enter it. Okay. Uh, and we want to use this unique term called home anniversary date. It's very specific, not something that almost sounds like it, which is home anniversary or something that seems familiar like closing date or closed date. There's actually multiple options. We want specifically this home anniversary date. You'll see later that that becomes really important when we're doing our home anniversary uh, send outs uh, through email. Uh, we need to make sure we have this specific date in there. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at Lofty. Um, <clears throat> let me show you again. This is where you would enter Lofty at the very beginning. Uh, go over here to people, click people. And now we are in our database of people. All right. And to add a single person. Over here on the upper right, we have add leads. Remember, uh, we've done bulk mail where we did this, uh, a bulk import, excuse me, where we did this uh, triple dot. We're not going to do that, but just to the left of it, where it has the plus and the add lead, you can click either of those and it will uh, open a window where we can add a single lead. Ready? Watch that. All right. So now we've got an add lead. This is just one lead being added at a time. And we're going to go ahead then and walk through this list and add it up. So um, we're going to add the primary here. You notice we can add a family member also, which is kind of nice uh, if you have a spouse, uh, kids, et cetera. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start over here on the right and the right middle. we got privacy. I mentioned to you, most important is I think you should call this a private lead right off the bat. Again, if you leave it as a company lead, the company controls it after you enter it and you cannot delete it um, or export it even. And so, but if it's a private lead, you have complete control over it. You can export it, you can delete it, you can do whatever you want. So any leads you put into the system, I recommend you call them private. All right, we have lead type. We can download that. Notice these little red stars, by the way. These are items you have to have. Everything else is optional. So it has to be uh, given a lead type. We're going to call it buyer, seller. Those are active, uh, renter, investor, agent, homeowner, landlord, or other. Uh, we're typically looking at homeowners and renters in our PCSOI group, and, unless they're actively buying or selling, for instance. All right, so uh, maybe we've got a homeowner, or let's do let's do a renter this time. So we'll click a renter. Uh, actually, let's do a homeowner because uh, I want to give them an address that we'll do some marketing on. So all right, we got a homeowner. Uh, and we're going to have now this star little pops open. you got to give them at least a first name, although not a last name. We're assuming you at least know their first name to add them in. So I'm gonna, just going to make something up here. Uh, let's say Tom. And the last name is uh, Smith. And actually, so that I know what it is, we're going to call it Test Smith. Okay, so Tom Test Smith we're going to be putting in. Now, the rest of it um, is just optional. If I have an email address, I'll add it. A phone number, I'll add it. If I don't, I won't. But let's go ahead and add it. So not real. Um, I don't know what we're up to. Let's see, 11 maybe um, at fakeemail.com. You know, whatever yours is, uh, you'd obviously put in the real email address. Uh, you have the option where you can also say what it is, like if this is a work 
or a home uh, or, or whatever, or you can even just leave it blank. Uh, and this, of course, is for the primary person and the primary email address. Remember, everything is going to get tied into the email. So let's say this is the home email. Um, and if you had a other email address, you could add that in. You could say, hey, this is for not real um, 12 at fake. And the reason I'm doing this is so the system doesn't email somebody in real life uh, by accident or something. And so uh, we've got, uh, this is going to be their uh, work email. Okay. And then it's saying, hey, which one is primary? Which one do you want us to use as the controlling one? And uh, you would typically pick the one they use the most or the one that you've been emailing them back and forth on the most. Okay. All right. And then we go down to, and you can just keep adding emails if you have them. Uh, otherwise, you move to the phone. And for phone, let's say we've got, uh, we've got a phone number. Um, and there's our phone number that we've made up for them. Uh, and uh, this is saying, hey, is, uh, we're assuming it's mobile, then you talk to them. So some other combination, then pick it like it was the landlord, excuse me, landline, and you either talk to valid number, bad number, other, et cetera. Uh, but we're going to say, yeah, sure, it's the mobile, and we talk to them. And so it's the, the cell number. You could, I don't know what you call it. You can call it cell. Or mobile, you can you can use whatever terms you prefer. I like cell, so I'm going to use cell. All right, there we go. And then it says, "Hey, permission to contact? Do you have permission to contact these people?" The default is no, so that you don't get yourself in hot water. But if you do have permission to contact them, you pick and choose. So, do you have permission to contact them by phone? Yep, we talked about. It. They said it was okay. It says, "Hey, are you sure?" You really have permission to do this? Because otherwise you can get in hot water and say, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, how about text? Oh, yeah, I've been texting them all week long. So, yeah, we've been texting. Okay, good. And how about email? Sure. Yeah, they actually sent me an email yesterday. Cool. All right, great. So now we're good. And if not, if you don't have uh, permission, then just check no. You know, you could do whatever your options are. Uh, and then the system, will, for instance, in this case, the system could email them, but it couldn't text them. And then you can make a call through the system. All right. Uh, so let's keep going. We've got uh, emailing address and then property addresses where it's going to add a bunch of property addresses. But let's say we got their mailing address is uh, 456 uh, Oak Street. And then it's going to now try to find that out there in the world somewhere. And uh, I'm in Colorado and there's no 456 uh, Oak Street. But hey, let's go ahead and pick... Um, uh, I don't know, Syracuse, New York. All right. Notice it'll autofill it in. So it's checking to make sure you got a real address, make sure you didn't make any typos or anything. And then you can name this. Is this their home? Is there something else? What is this? And uh, was it a rental property? Uh, are they leasing it? What is it? All right. So we're going to say, yeah, this is their home. Uh, what you would want to do here is if the uh, if they had a mailing address that was different than their property address, like I use a PO box all the time, you could have a PO box for the mail, and then maybe their physical address is uh, is an actual building, uh, uh, and that's why you would have that spread out, separated. All right, if we know their birth date, let's say we do, we're going to click this down, and this is a great one to reach out on people. I'm telling you that all the top agents love to reach out on birthdays. So if you've got the birth date, put it in here, even if you don't have the year. Like, let's say you just have the month. See what happens if we just pick a month and a day. Let's say we know it happens to be June and it's June 3rd. All right. Let's, there we go. See, it'll save the June 3rd and it'll send it out on there. Now, if you also had the year, you, let's say you find out later what the year is. Uh, they were born in 1961. All right, cool. And then we click out and now that date is in there. Source. We'll drop this. This is going to be you, agent. Okay, and it's just the regular. There's all kinds of different places the agent word pops in, but we just want agent by itself. And that, uh, if you recall, then these people will not immediately start getting sent out um, a reports by the system. That's why we're doing that as well. Okay, all right. So we got that as the source, and then the pipeline. What are they? Uh, they're going to be your SOI, your sphere. Okay, so we'll click sphere and then segment. Uh, they are going to either be your um, uh, 
past client, if they were a past client, but this is probably like we, in our example, we just said somebody I met. So uh, we'll just call them your sphere, your SOI. Notice it's different. This one called it sphere and this one called it SOI or sphere of influence. That's fine. These are terms that were put in by the company and we can't change. So we just, we'll just roll with it. It's assigned to, and then you want to make sure your name is here. And then tags, this is where you can make different tags for different people and even give them multiple tags. Remember, this is actually very important for us so that these people get all of our correspondence. So we're going to open up tag and we're going to go for PCSOI. Notice there's a huge list here, uh, but there's also a search feature. And so I'm going to go ahead and do a search and I'm going to do PCSOI and there it is. PCSOI. Now remember you had to enter this first once and once it's in the system, then now it's ready to go. So it's ready, it's there and I click it and I say, yep, that's what I want. And then you can either hit the tab button. Whoops. You can either hit the tab, uh, actually tab button didn't work. So what you do is just you click outside of it. All right, well, we don't have a smart plan set up, although we could, and but that's advanced. Don't worry about that at this point. Uh, and then we're going to start looking down this list, and we don't have any of these other items. Typically, if you have them, go ahead and you want to fill them in at this time. But what I want to point out is right down here, it took me forever to find this thing. See how it's highlighting up, and it's like two arrows pointing down. So again, this was the, sys this was the entry page, and you go down here to where it has two arrows. It's above the note. Watch what happens when I click those two arrows. It's going to give me more options. Ooh, look at all that. All that popped up underneath. Uh, and, th and then this work gets confusing, though, because I'm looking for home anniversary date. So it has a closed date. It has a closing date. It has a closing anniversary. And that's why I stayed away from that term. It got a little confusing. Uh, and, and so I let's just go down here. Date purchased, contract date. Uh, all these could be what we're looking for, which is uh, reaching out to people when we have a home anniversary. So I'm going to look specifically for that. Now, here's home anniversary, and I'm going to warn you, that's not it. It's the next one, home anniversary date. Home anniversary date is what we picked uh, that we believe is important. It, well, we know it's important because that's what we're going to show you how to set up automation based off of. So go ahead and enter their home anniversary date if you help them buy a house or uh, any type of property, right, that they're living in, uh, or, or even an investment property. You can play it off of that as well. So here's a home anniversary date. We'll go ahead and pick the date. So best thing is to pick the year first. Uh, when did we help these people? We helped them. Well, it's not in the future. We helped them back in the past and say it was 2005. And the month, uh, I think we helped them in, um, it was in the spring, so it was March. And now it's pulled up the actual days. And I'm like, yeah, I think the closing was, or you're actually looking at the date, but if you're trying to remember, yeah, I think the closing was on a Thursday, the 24th. So we click that because we have one weekend left for them to move in. And boom, now it's there, March 24th of 2005. Woohoo! now we're in good, good shape. All right, so now we go down, and if there was anything else you want to enter, go ahead. You can also make a special note. All right, we're almost done. I'll just point this out. You can also add a new family member, like a spouse. And, uh, oh, now it asks for a relationship. I guess we didn't know that before. So let's say that was Tom. So we'll say this is his wife. And uh, we'll say her name is um, Nancy. And uh, let's say the same last name. Tess Smith. And then uh, if we have any other information for Nancy, we can fill in here. Um, let's say we know her phone number is 555 and 9912. All right. And uh, we know that's her mobile number. We'll call it a cell. Again, whatever descriptor you want doesn't really matter. You're making this up in description. Uh, let's say we do have an email for Nancy. Uh, she is um, not, let's see, not real. I think we're up to 13. I don't know. Uh, at uh, fakeemail.com. And that is uh, her work. All right, cool. And then uh, do we have a, and notice there's a lot less information. Uh, how about birth date? Do we have a birth date for her? Yeah, just let's say how we do. Maybe this is a close friend of our families and we know. So we'll go ahead and put it in. 
Uh, the year, let's see, her birthday was in uh, 1970, and she was born, uh, I don't know, let's see, uh, November, and uh, it was November 12th. Okay, so we got November 12th of 1970. We review, everything looks good. Uh, we can go back to the primary. If we had anything we remembered, uh, we'll want to do a quick review. And once that's done, we'll click save. All right, let's see if that worked. Yep, here we go. And right there is Tom Smith and uh, all the information's in there. Now, if I click on Tom Smith, by the way, if I click on him, now it brings up just his record, and I can go ahead and check that out. So I got Tom, he's in Sphere, he's an SOI. I got a phone number, I got an email, I got his birth date. A source was the agent, that was me. This was the date that it was created. I got PCSOI, I've got an address. And look at that family member, we've got Nancy, she's the wife. And uh, we're looking good here. And notice we've got this double down arrow again, although it shows a little more full view of details. We click on that, it would show if there was any additional information. Uh, looks like we've got a mailing address. I can't remember if we had that before and home anniversary date. That's good. And uh, that's the information we got. All right, cool. I uh, will do more with this screen later, but I just wanted to show you that Tom did make it into the system. That's how you can add one person at a time.